Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News, and today we're going to test the difference between the i5 6600K that's already in this PC and the i7 6700K, um, which I'm about to upgrade into this PC. Um, we're going to find out what the real world difference is. So not just gaming, um, but also like photo editing as well as video editing, which is what I primarily use this computer for anyways. So let's start off with the specs of these processors. They're very, very similar processors, both created on the Skylake architecture. They're both built on the 14 nanometer process, and they both share very many similarities. They have the same TDP, the same amount of PCI Express lanes, the same socket, and they both accept the same kind of RAM. However, they do have a couple differences. For example, the base clock speed on the i7-6700K is 4 GHz, whereas it's only 3.5 on the i5 processor. They also have different turbo boost, of course. Um, the i7 is at the 4.2 GHz, and the i5 is at 3.9, and they also have different thread counts as well as cache memory. The i7 has 8 threads. Um, four core processor just like the i5 is but the i5 only has four threads and the i5 also only has six megabytes of cache whereas the i7 has eight. So for testing purposes there's going to be two tests. Um, both with each processor I'm going to do a benchmark test first and then I'm going to do a rendering test second. In the rendering test I'm going to have a minute 4k clip and I'm going to see which processor is able to render that video quicker. And then we'll just see which one that comes out on top. So first test we're going to do is we're going to do some gaming testing. So let's run through the benchmarks. So the first benchmark I ran, both for the i5 and for the i7, was Firestrike Ultra. They both scored very similar scores in Firestrike Ultra, which wasn't surprising to me. I kind of expected the i5 to perform very similarly to the i7 in gaming situations. The second gaming benchmark that I did was the Tomb Raider benchmark. In this benchmark, again, the i5 performed very similarly to the i7. There was only a 2 FPS difference almost exactly across the board, where the overall score was only 47 FPS for the i5 and 49 FPS for the i7. And the last benchmark I ran was Cinebench, which is a CPU stress test benchmark. In this benchmark, the i7 really showed the benefits of its hyper-threading by clearly rendering the image much quicker than the i5. The final scores of the Cinebench test was 575 to the i5 processor and 898 to the i7, so a pretty substantial lead in the i7. And finally, we're going to open up Premiere Pro and we're going to do a video rendering test. The video is about a minute 40 long, and it's a 4K video. It's set to the H.264 format, and set to YouTube 4K, and then the only things I change from default is render at maximum depth, and use maximum render quality. So by starting both renders at the same time, we can see which one actually renders the minute 40 4K video quicker. They seem close at the beginning, but all of a sudden i7 starts pulling ahead. And as you can see, the i7 processor finished rendering the video at 3 minutes and 32 seconds, while the i5 was still going. The i5 didn't finish rendering the video until 4 minutes and 58 seconds, which is 30% slower than the i7. i7 is the best. No, i5 is the best. No, i7 is the best. No, i5 is the best. No, i7 is the best. No, i5 is the best. Will you both just get out of here? Sorry about that. So what I concluded was the i5 and the i7 were very, very similar processors, 
when you're using them for gaming. Basically in gaming, there was such a slight difference between the i5 and the i7, there was only a slight increase in performance when you use the i7 over the i5. However, you started to see a difference between the i5 and the i7 in productivity-like stuff. So, for example, for me, I use this rig a lot for photo editing, video editing, rendering, stuff like that. That's where you really get the benefit of the i7 over the i5. If you're making a gaming PC or something like that, the i7 is not really worth it in my opinion because you're going to pay about 100 bucks more for the i7 over the i5 and you're only going to get like maybe a 2 FPS difference. It's not really worth that extra $100 that you have to spend to get it. In my opinion, the only reason you should be getting the i7 is if you're going to also be doing productivity like stuff like I do on this rig. Um, and that's really the only reason you would need the i7. If you like this video, please click that like button down below. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!